Can we make it interesting to say he came from a firm where they already had a consultant that he loved? Sure, because he probably did. <laughs> Usually happens that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, so. that's an important part of why we do this. The CFO is the dominant decision maker for GBMC. The uh, prior CFO we worked with for about 12 years and had a great relationship with. And Clark and myself on our first meeting with the committee, <coughs> the new CFO sat in with the old CFO. And we came away from that meeting feeling as if we got roughed the out with this guy from his comments. He scared us, that he has other ideas. <coughs> and we quickly, which we would have done anyway, scheduled a meeting for an hour. We come in one-on-one -on -one with him, get to know him a little bit, and then also present our history with the hospital. And that went 180, and we had a spectacular meeting with the gentleman. Came out of that meeting with things that we had already started to work on that he was passionate about, that he would have asked us to do in his new role, but we were already one step ahead of him with the prior CFO, and it uh, ended up being Exactly what had to happen to get them one on one, no distractions, and share. So, and this, this sounds like a layup. This, it's this, a layup, but we still want to well, critique. We didn't know. We still want to critique how we do. I'm, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm, but I'm you counting didn't know on it, my but... colleague to make it a little challenging for you. Yeah. Keith, I came from a much bigger hospital. We had <clears> thousands <throat> more employees than these people do. I'm going, to, I'm going to listen to him, but I know I really want to. Behind him? We're rolling. <coughs> yeah. Are we ready? Okay. Are we ready? Okay. Let's begin. Good oh. afternoon, Ted. Welcome to GBMC. <coughs> am, am I the only person in the room? <laughs> no, there'll be a couple of Ted's. You and me. Okay. Thank God. Well, good. So, anyway, welcome to GBMC. So, I'm John Mann. I'm Principal and Director of uh, Investment uh, Analysis at Asset Strategy Consultants. And I'm Ann Hernandez, I'm a Senior Investment Analyst for uh, Asset Strategy. I've been there 11 years, and I work with Asset Strategy Consultants. So we're happy we could get this opportunity to meet with you one on one and really give you a good in-depth background and uh, an understanding of what we do. So from what I uh, think in terms of what's been set up for us, we have 30 minutes to discuss uh, our capabilities, looking at the, the, the services we provide to your defined contribution plan. And um, what we're going to try and do is to you know, cover you know, what we feel are some of our strengths and distinguishing features of the firm, <coughs> and, you know, what we're able to do in terms of our process and what we can do in the end to, in essence, um, work with you to really help strengthen this plan and move it towards what I'd say would be uh, a model plan that can be used in, in a healthcare situation. So um, is there anything at this point that you might want us to focus on within that context? How long have you been to consulting on, on a GBMC? Oh, well, I've been, I've been with Asset Strategy for 10 years, um, and as I said, uh, principal <coughs> and director of research. And uh, I've been on this engagement um, since 2007. So uh, you, know, you have a good, long history with GBMC, we had a great relationship with your predecessor, and I think you know, with our uh, defined contribution team that works with Ann and myself, we've been able to really forge ahead and you know, bring a, a really great dynamic to your plan. So yeah, so we'll try and cover that and, and show what we can do. Um, so I'm gonna work from this book and I'll point out some pages and. Ann and I will go through and, and discuss some of the things, but you know, please, if something comes up that you want us to stop and, and uh, cover in some more depth, you know, feel free to ask. Okay. Yeah, we'll go and do that. So, so what I want to do first off is, um, you know, we go to page one in the book, and this is an overview of what we think are a lot of features of asset strategy. But what I wanted to do was maybe talk about some of the, you know, biggest strengths of us. Uh, we are 
um, again, one of the oldest and largest consulting firms in the state of Maryland. So um, as, a, as a regional firm with great history, you know, that's something that you can count on in terms of our constant um, presence and the ability to partner with you in the future. We consult to, on retirement plans, endowments, foundations, and other corporate, um, <coughs> other corporate reserves. And you know, I think our singular focus, another distinguishing feature, is the fact that um, we like to work on what we call mid-market clients. So these are clients from $25 million to half a billion dollars in assets because we think that there's lots of unique challenges that they face that because we work with similar clients, we have a great understanding of that and can help you out in, uh, in terms of what we do. And one of the things that I think is another great distinguishing feature is the fact that we partner with Callan Associates. Callan is a very large institutional consulting firm. We look at them as sort of our peer resource because although Ann will talk about a lot of the internal resources we have, we also like to work with them and use them as a sounding board and another uh, source of research <coughs> for us in terms of manager searches or defined contribution structures or other things that uh, we find helpful. Do they provide the same services you do? Well, they provide, we like to think that we're sort of mirror images, except that the clients that they work with are you know, multi-billion dollar clients. And because of that, um, you know, they have, they bring a lot of strength to the table in terms of, uh, for us, the uh, ability to chat with them and get some information on the same sort of managers that we would be researching. But they're doing it for an allocation that's maybe $300 million. But our clients are working on allocations that may be, you know, two, three, five million dollars. So, um, you know, and their, their clients have um, their own unique challenges as state pension plans or big corporate pension plans. Our clients as smaller endowments, foundations, and other institutions have other challenges that they have to deal with relative to maybe the makeup of their volunteer investment committee or some of the issues that <coughs> smaller healthcare um, organizations have to face in terms of being an independent versus being part of a larger system. So, so my are, question was, Yes. do they provide the same service as you do? They do. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, <coughs> so in terms of the overview and our distinguishing features, one of the things that we also like to talk about on page two is the fact that you know, our focus is on our clients and also the fact that um, our people like to become involved in our clients' community and work alongside our clients to help bolster the community and give them, um, help make their environment, uh, the client environment, stronger and more helpful. talk a little bit now um, about independence and, and asset strategies independence. We have no affiliation with any other banks or brokerage firms. Um, we're compensated entirely on fees based on the growth of our clients' assets. Um, asset strategy acts as a fiduciary to our clients, so we're acting in the best interests of our clients. Finally, we offer customized solutions, so we aren't <coughs> cutter approach to each client. We know that each client has their own unique um, objectives and approach to that. We have open architecture to find the best of class funds for clients. We aren't wedded to any one platform. So you know, your, your plan won't have just one family of funds. We'll try to find the best of class in each asset class. We uh, also can create customized target date funds, which I think is important on the Side. How do you define that uh, when you talk about targeted? But aren't there different kinds? So target date funds um, are based on when the plan participant is going to retire in the future, and the uh, there is a um, guide path, glide path, path, excuse me, that uh, will change over time, and the asset allocation we uh, use will change accordingly. And so you're the control tower that brings that glide path down. 
That's correct. I got it. Okay. So this results in an objective conflict-free solution for our clients, where our clients' interests are completely aligned with their priorities. If you move to the next page, um, Asset Strategy has a number of tools at our disposal to make informed decisions on behalf of our clients. When conducting asset allocation models, um, Asset Strategy uses Callan's Asset Max um, software, which uses projected risk and return assumptions to determine an optimal asset mix based on the client's risk and return objectives. Um, in manager research, um, we uh, when conducting a man manager search, we have access to several different databases. Uh, we use Callan, PSN on separate account and mutual fund side, Morningstar for mutual funds, Prequin and Eureka Hedge are used on the alternative side. Um, through qualitative screening, um, we uh, conduct several interviews at, over the course of the year with <coughs> managers, we send out questionnaires on a quarterly basis, so uh, we have constant contact with managers, um, and they are incoming as well as outgoing contacts. And this combined with the experience of our senior consultants um, that have a singular focus on the institutional clients make for a strong partnership with our clients. We have very seasoned uh, senior consultants that have many years of experience and uh, that, that serves our clients very well. If you turn to page seven, we have a list of representative clients uh, that we work with. Um, as you can see, we have a wide client base in the endowment foundation and pension and defined contribution area. Um, we also have experience working with a number of other healthcare related clients in the defined contribution space. And some of those are listed on the following page on page eight. So if we um, turn now to page nine, I wanted to talk a little bit briefly about our process and some of the things that distinguish that. Um, looking at page nine, we like to talk about <coughs> the process as a continuum. In other words, this is a continuous cycle of development, <coughs> objectives, um, steps taken to review and analyze those objectives, uh, select managers and implement it, monitor it and evaluate how well it's doing, and then go back and see what opportunities we take to improve it. So that's something that we're always doing as we get together um, either annually or periodically to sit down with you and say, how are you reaching your goals? Have the goals changed? And what do we need to do to implement um, opportunities to try and meet those new goals? So what interval works works best <coughs> in your experience? I'm sorry? Okay. Between meetings and updates and refinements? Um, well, we think that uh, an annual review process is the best because it lets time pass, uh, gives things an opportunity to get implemented, mm -hmm. and then you can go back and take a look and see how well you've done to meet those objectives over a reasonable period of time. And how big a change would necessitate changing things like your asset allocation? Does it have to be a significant event like acquiring a new business or? Well, I think changing the asset allocation is based on um, you know, really um, just the primarily the length of time that you have to deal with to meet your objectives. Mm -hmm. So, and that depends on your um, that depends on your organization. In a defined contribution plan, what we're looking at is the the big objective is the employee's retirement. And so, what are depending on the length of time until retirement, um, what are what is a prudent type of asset allocation at each stage of their work life to uh, before they get to retirement. Okay. Good, and so on um, page 11, um, so, sorry, page 10, um, that's where one of the things we like to look at as part of this uh, framework development that we work on is um, the fact that we're fiduciaries. We're fiduciaries alongside you in putting the plan together and overseeing it. And we have to 
look at the, this code of fiduciary conduct as one of the main considerations in the design of your program. And on page 11, one of the things that is sort of the playbook to help us meet that, um, meet that framework and development that you have is the investment policy statement. And so we like to weave the fiduciary conduct uh, considerations into the investment <coughs> policy statement. And you can see that these are the major sections that we have to, um, that we have to craft in order to uh, measure and implement your, um, your benefit program. I have a question, John. Sure. Um, <coughs> do we need to get an attorney to draw up this document, or do you all, or your attorneys, or? Great point. We can do that. And um, you know, we, for all of our clients, we craft the investment policy statement. We work with them. There are some legal framework that might be, uh, depending on the client situation, might need to be maybe reviewed by legal counsel to make sure that it conforms with the governance structure. But for the most part, we do it, and we work with you and your committee to implement it. Thank you. Sure. I'm just going to spend a minute on due diligence and our investment research process. So our, our due diligence begins with our experienced team of analysts that you see listed here on page 12. Um, we have 11 research analysts on our team, and uh, as you can see, we have several with CFAs, MBAs, CPAs, um, and specifically um, in the defined contribution space, we have um, a few folks that you know, are qualified uh, pension administrators, qualified plan financial consultants. So what? Excuse me? So what? So, <coughs> so that should help be a benefit to your, to GBMC's program. Oh. And it gives us a lot of good depth in order to um, oh. take on client challenges. We can utilize the skills that these people have to deal with um, either administrative challenges, investment challenges, or perhaps even legal challenges that are going to pop up from time to time. Okay. Thanks. Sure. One of our first jobs when we uh, are hired by a plan sponsor would be to review and evaluate their current roster of managers. Um, we could also do an analysis of their performance to determine if the fund has been able to meet or exceed their respective benchmarks over time. You know, uh, has the manager uh, been consistent in their philosophy and process? Um, has there been any turnover with their team? Um, if necessary, we'll conduct a manager search if we found that we need to replace one of these <coughs> managers in the plan's lineup. And that would begin with a quantitative analysis of their performance. Again, we would uh, go back to our databases we have access to um, on the mutual fund side and, and uh, separate account side, but for a defined contribution plan, we would mostly be using funds. Um, and these uh, tools help us uh, screen on, a on several different performance factors. Do we have any funds or managers that perhaps we shouldn't have at this point? That's a good question. <laughs> Mark? I got my great question. Yeah, good question. Well, we have a watch list, and we do keep an eye on funds that may or may not be appropriate based on the investment policy statement, but there's no one there right now that we're looking to replace it. Okay. You're part of their team. That's right. I just got hired for really. <laughs> <laughs> we pull in people like Clark. <laughs> we have a deep team. Right. Mm -hmm. So as part of the search process, we also consider qualitative factors of the firm, the philosophy of the process. Does the manager maintain a repeatable, consistent approach? Does the manager use a team approach, or is there one key man running the portfolio? And again, how much turnover has the team experienced? How do you spend most of your time? I spend most of my time doing manager searches. Really? Yes. What part of it do you like the most? Uncovering a new manager that um, has terrific results and a strong team that uh, might not Undiscovered manager. A, di a diamond in the rough? Yes. And what do you like least about your job? Besides management? Presentations. Um, <laughs> besides presentations. No. Working, um, working next to Ed. <laughs> um, probably um, 
having to uh, defend managers that seem to underperform in particularly the large cap space. Um, that we spend a lot of time on some managers um, where maybe it's an area where we could use a passive um, strategy and, and try to find alpha elsewhere in the portfolio. Do you make the recommendation to your client to terminate the manager? Yes, we, we yes. can make recommendations to terminate, sure. Have, have you personally done that? Yes, I would say yes. <laughs> Do you know why I ask? No. I just want to know that you're tough enough to do it in the event that we have a situation like that. Great. <coughs> Another additional part of the process is um, the ongoing manager monitoring and evaluation. So as John mentioned earlier, once we build out our roster of managers, there's going to be this ongoing continual monitoring of those managers and making sure that we have a continual dialogue um, with them. Again, we, we submit uh, questionnaires to them for them to complete every quarter just to make sure that um, we're not missing anything on the qualitative side. And uh, they're answering our questions as to why they're outperforming or underperforming. Why would you fire a manager? How long do you give them? Well, we put we have a watch list um, that we uh, look at uh, returns on a three and five year basis. And if we see that managers are continually underperforming, <coughs> below median, <coughs> the benchmark over those time periods, that that is a topic that we'll take to a quarterly meeting and we'll discuss it with the client and you know, try to figure out whether or not we'll retain or move on. <coughs> Finally, uh, communication. Communication is really important. We're local. Um, we're always you know, going to come meet with clients face-to-face -face or, or just <coughs> email over the phone. Uh, we provide quarterly reports four to six weeks past the end of the quarter. Um, and this contains an overview of the economy and market commentary, uh, the talk about the portfolio and the total return. We go into each uh, manager and um, any recommendations that the consultant needs to make. I'm going to spend some time next in our retirement plans consulting group. Do there any questions that you had? to this point that we hadn't maybe touched on? No. Okay, great. Yeah, so on page 16, um, as you've probably seen, as we've seen before, we have uh, a number of defined contribution client relationships. Some of the more significant ones are, are listed here. Um, you know, I think the, the main message is that we have a really robust client practice in defined contribution, and so we're able to really marshal a lot of resources. and. On page 17, you know, here's a layout of the resources that we have. Um, as you can see, this is really what I'll call sort of a multidiscipline type of approach that we're taking because besides just uh, having the consultants, we have investment management, we have third-party administration, client service. So we're working together as a team, um, you know, communicating back and forth, sharing information about the things that matter relative to your defined contribution plan. On page 18, the services that we're showing, I think if we look at some of the major topics here, what you see again is just a really deep range of services that we can provide. And it, I think, points to the complexity of you know, sponsoring the defined contribution plan these days. You know, it used to be just put out the lineup and hope the uh, employees are going to invest in it and that was it. But, you know, with uh, the DOL regulations that have come out and a lot of emphasis on retirement readiness, there's a lot of factors that have to be considered, and the good thing is, is that you know we've tried to really focus on providing that sort of information to clients. Um, so I think 19 is a great picture that shows right in the middle. Here's your plan, and here's your goals, your responsibility, your liability as a plan sponsor, and then how does that balance against the plan participants and their retirement readiness? So I think if you look at the top two boxes, you know, these are the sorts of inputs that we have to take into consideration in terms of putting a plan together. 
and then right in the middle on either side of it is you know, where the participant is in their retirement readiness. On the left, it's the accumulation phase as they invest. And on the right is the decumulation phase when it's time to take that money out and where do we go with it. And then all of these factors combined are put together to come up with uh, a plan structure and the processes that have to be put together in order to engage that plan. On 20, we talk a bit about open architecture. And you know, the open architecture concept is something that says you know, one firm can't do it all. So there are um, you know, other, other ben uh, providers out there that may do everything from uh, third party administration to investment management and retirement administration. But as we just saw, it's so complex that um, you know, we find that it's very tough to get uh, you know, somebody who has great core competence, competency in all, those, in all those features. So what we like to do is try to find the best of the best. Go out and find who's the best TPA, who are the best investment providers, um, so that we can really um, open up uh, and provide a strong program to you. And on page 21, you can see just the, you know, just the wide range of mutual fund options that are out there. So, you know, there's plenty of great managers to choose from. And one of the things that we're working with our clients to strive towards on page 22 is, as we talk about open architecture, lifestyle funds or target date funds. When we look at these, you know, do you want to go for a target date fund that has all of their own, a uh, provider that has all of their own mutual funds in there. Well, I think you know, it's safe to say that they don't have the top uh, fund in all, in all the uh, lineup that they offer. So if you look on the right here, the, the benefits of building uh, your own target date fund allows you to customize it, put in some cost control, replace funds that are underperforming, um, you can set up your own glide path, and you can also access core funds that uh, we think are strong and can be part of your lineup. 23 is a chart that basically, if you look all the way over to the right, it's going to tell us you know, all the benefits and all the simplification of the decision-making process of building your own and establishing your own target date fund glide path is going to bring to you. It brings it actually to the beneficiaries, to participants. It you know, takes away a lot of the complex decision making about uh, which funds to use, how much do I put in a fund, and what and uh, what am I going to do to be ready for retirement. Um, and I think you know as we go, we can show here on page 26 we have some case studies that show some of the significant achievements that we've had with some of our other clients in terms of in terms of doing some cost um, replacement and cost reduction and efficiency. So I think that, um, you know, based on that, I think we're going to be able to bring a lot to the table to you, and there's more pages in here that we can take a look at afterwards. So why retain asset strategy? Um, we're local, um, we're accessible, completely independent. Um, no competing lines of business, and we have a strong commitment to our clients. And we know you very well. Um, we know your organization very well. We're really excited about being able to start to work with you and perhaps maybe tap into some of the experiences that you've had um, you know, with other organizations that you've worked with to work together and make this a really mutually beneficial relationship. Do I expect any surprises when you go to the next quarterly meeting? Well, I know about what you're going to be talking about ahead of time, or how do we make sure we yeah. have some good communication? Because I am the CFA. Now. Right, right. And I think what we can do is, and what we had with, uh, with Eric, your predecessor, was we did have a planning meeting where we would get together, go through, uh, in essence, the proposed agenda for the meeting, what we would cover, what some of our recommendations would be, because we don't want to you know, catch you by surprise and or make a recommendation that you're totally in disagreement with. So, yeah, yeah we're, we're going to definitely do that. Good. Well, thanks. Look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. And what's for lunch? <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs>
And you don't know yet, do you? Two minutes left. Two minutes left. Gosh. Wow. I didn't have to didn't have to jump through all those doors on those last few pages. Well, John, I'm sorry I'm late. I just walked in the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, two minutes. And uh, yeah, I can only my car's running outside. So can you uh, tell me what you told my colleague here? That we're gonna we're gonna continue our great relationship. We're gonna provide you with you know top notch defined contribution uh, retirement consulting services. And we have a, and we're going to be able to do that because we have such a great deep bench, multidiscipline approach that's going to take a look at all the complex angles of trying to run a defined contribution plan these days. So, um, you know, I think the, the days of just set it and forget it, hope your, uh, hope your employees are going to put money into the plan and, you know, not worry about it, that's gone. Uh, there's a lot of fiduciary liability out there. Um, and that's one of our key focuses with our um, with our defined contribution team that we have, and we're going to really help you out and make sure you don't get uh, caught by surprise. Sleep at night, huh? Yep, that's the name of the game. Not bad for a minute. Pardon? Not bad. Not, not, bad. not bad for a minute? No, okay. <laughs> what a, what a, I had to shove my out. Good. You can tell we don't do this all the time. <laughs> How often? <laughs> How often? Well, I have one client that I have to go to that's an insurance company client. And um, every now and then, so they, they want to keep me at home so I can actually do work. Um, has, doesn't mean anything about what they do, but mm -hmm. um, and Ann is Ann will go out and help out and pitch in on um, uh, finalist presentations from time to time. You know, sort of show some depth of resources and such. So you were you went up. Which one did you go up the hood? No. McDaniel. Uh, McDaniel. SPCA. And you're getting more and talking about what you do right. rather than what I the firm does. I usually just so. cover like the search process for any presentation. So. I was taking you there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I don't do it often. So. Be careful, Ann. You're getting good at it. No. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> That's what today's all about. After tomorrow. Yeah. After tomorrow, she's out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we did more. Should be. Yes, taking over everything. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Job security and don't worry about it. <laughs> John, nice presence, good pace, very clear, conversational style work, nice transitions. In fact, I think they were all silent, were they not? Yeah, we worked out a little high sign about when it was going to be heard. You mean the one where you do that and she does that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was kicking her on the ankle. <laughs> <laughs> Things that uh, you might want to take note of and uh, reconsider. Yeah. Lots of qualifiers. We think, we try, we feel. You could do better than that. Okay. Start off minimally saying what we've found is okay. and work it north from there. All the way up to what we've learned from our clients is, okay? okay. So more conviction. Uh, in the opening, uh, you confirm you didn't confirm the time. You acknowledged the time. If I had been Ted, I would say, whoa, 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 whoa. But now we don't have that amount of time. I would have. Okay. I would have bolded you. Your filler words of choice. You got two of them. You know and really. I used to play football. Lots of really. Lots of you know. <laughs> I took umbrage to Ted's great point. I made some great points too. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point, Ted. Great point. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was that great. What if you said it was an interesting point? Does that put it more on the <coughs> playing field or is it still Busted. elevating his point versus yours? Safer. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I just get up on good and great and. Yeah. 
outstanding and yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> Short answer? Yeah. I hope that hurt. I picked that one up. <laughs> I hope that hurt. <laughs> like a brick through the window. You got to really, no, that's the, again, that's the first thing you do when you, what's the short answer here? Yeah. Almost met, almost say to yourself, the short answer is, and then say the answer, just to remind yourself. Okay. Um, and nice pace, clear, good transitions. You need to speak up a little bit, just a little bit. Don't talk to the book. Oh, well, I mean, the, the. Got to learn. If you're going to use the book, because your eye contact is excellent when it's there. When I got you uh, to Manager Search Boulevard to talk about that, that's what I want you to do the whole time. Okay? So don't. Uh, don't waste a great asset, which is your your, your presence and your and your eyes. And like uh, your colleague, there are lots of us and ums and the usual suspects that come in. Mm -hmm. Keep it conversation. <laughs> Other comments? It was very good. I would have. Uh, I think the thing to consider is I would have taken, you know, to refer to page seven, talk about our clients, put it really up front, let them feel comfortable that we know their market. And then I would have picked up on what Al said and then hit from, from page 19 that, you know, you all have responsibilities in two primary areas, A, as fiduciaries for the hospital, and B, to your participants mm -hmm. for retiring. And then you get into what all you do. Whereas we talk a good bit about what we do, what all we can do before those two make <coughs> headache, don't they? Remember I was talking about starting off with you versus we? Yeah. Presentation audit. They're more interested in them than they are in you. And so to the extent that they're interested in you, it's to how you can help them. So lay out, lay out the course and then fill in the blanks. Anything else, Ted? Would you buy a used car from them? Oh, yes. You would? Okay. <laughs> right. I, got, I got a real good deal. <laughs> <laughs> I got a deal for you. Yeah. Yeah, Other comments? Got, you got a few jumpers in the car. Yeah, Bill. I have a, something I always remember. One of them, a consultant told me this many years ago, maybe it was you. But they say money managers and consultants never say try. I mean, sometimes you know, no, we, try. we try to. We try to do this. Okay. Everybody says it, mm -hmm. and nobody should. Mm -hmm. they don't know. Yeah. Now, there's pushback on that point. The pushback is from the legal and compliance people that say, "You, you, you, you have to say try. You have to say strive, want to, like to. You have to write it that way." Mm -hmm. You don't have to speak it that way. And, and the other thing is you never have a lawyer do it like this. Never what never. You never have a lawyer do an IPS. Oh. You can tell the client that. Yeah. Well, no. But you mm -hmm. get in trouble if you have that. True. Okay. Great. Okay. Good. And we got to look at the video. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a sense from Ted, being your your designated client, new new CFO? Did you get any sense from him whether he was comfortable with what you were saying? Yeah, I did actually. Did you? Yeah. Um, well, uh, especially for example, the question that you asked about are you going to be surprised in the meetings, and we talked about that process and what we would do. Yeah gave me a pretty good sense that you were good. But, you know, I guess probably maybe what we didn't do was say, well, I guess that would be a good thing. What a kind of question to ask him to get his sense of satisfaction with what we did. We said, I think I recall, we said, oh, we really look forward to working with you. We think this is going to be great. But then how do you ask them 
you know, okay, so what do you think? Can you do this? Based on your experience, are you comfortable with what we do and what we're proposing to do going mm -hmm. forward? Okay. That's the first question. Yeah. Have we answered all your questions? True. Okay. And then grovel and scrape a little bit and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. John, I have a question. How did you react to Ted when he reminded you that he's the CFO? Um, hopefully I reacted okay. I mean, what was your first, what went through your mind when he's, he, he, he weighed in heavy just to remind you he's the boss? Did, I, I mean, I didn't like him, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I didn't do that. No, you didn't. No, no, I... He just let it go. But he must yeah, have it. I, that didn't hit me as much as him, him, Keith, saying, what's the answer, the short answer? <laughs> That's when I realized, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, I, I was just letting so it go I, on and on and go merrily down the lane. You know? yeah, and you was, were doing a good job. Yeah, I soiled myself on that You one. made three lefts, two rights, uh, a complete yeah. U-turn. Yeah. So that, that was the one that was more unsettling than anything. He's, he's a soft boy. <laughs> he is a pussy cat. Really. Yeah, I know, yeah. He is a pussy cat. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Anything at all? Yeah, just one other point. I, I, if I'm going to go through all these characteristics in detail, have we're, have we're searching for, I would strive to use anybody. The best we, we, we find the best of the best, and say it a couple times, mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than so much of the process, the outcome is we find the best of the best. I'm just trying to shorten. I mean, your, your, your time frame is good, but I'm just trying to think some ways to shorten anything. Mm -hmm. One of my COOs, when I did a search, said, you told me you do the best of the best, but they're not number one over your time frame. Yeah. I hope not. But she's <laughs> telling you that's what she said. Depends on how you describe best. Yeah, I mean, you could say you know, we're looking for consistency of managers over a longer period yeah, that's right, of yeah. time. Yeah. Whatever you I know the right answer. Yeah. Just a, that, and then she started yelling. <laughs> <laughs> so, for you veterans that go back a number of years, can you do you have the data that you can look at and say some of the people that we placed in searches back ten years ago or five years ago are still in place? Mm -hmm. We could, but we haven't because I think that it, it's not always good to stay too long with the manager, i.e., Lake Mason Value Trust, 15 years, fantastic, and then all of a sudden fell off the cliff. But so in terms of a percentage, and then yeah, right. and, and then with acknowledgement that there are some, no, 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 i.e. That, that would be good. No, I think the other thing, thing too to. is, is that we're co-fiduciaries. So we are presenting the information, but a committee may feel, you know, we may either A, inherit some a, a fund, but right. some of these committees, you know, believe it or not, they would say, I can't fire Brown Advisory, I hunt with him, mm -hmm. you know. They, I mean, they, so we don't always control. Which is why in some cases that's why they've hired you. <laughs> right, and that's what we tell them. We'll, you know, we'll let you hire them, we'll, we'll do the dirty work and we'll fire right. them. But there are, I mean, because it's not a discretionary relationship, sometimes we stay too long at the dance because they pass on our recommendations. So I'm just saying, you could have a manager that stayed too long at the dance, and it's, be, you know, because they weren't going to fire Bill Miller. So you're the investment manager, and I call you up and I say, uh, Ms. Hernandez, I've got some good news and some bad news. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The good news is that you're fired. The bad news is I meant to call you yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay.